Let's take a look at a popular circuit uh, that's modeled in RTL, which is called a shift register. Okay? We've looked at a shift register before when we just had single D flip-flops, and it was a way to take a single line of data that's coming in and to move it through a series of D flip-flops. And the reason you do that is to convert serial to parallel data. So if you, for example, let's say that in this situation you had four D flip-flops <clears throat> and you bring in four bits at a time based on the rising edge of a clock. Every fourth clock, you would have access to four bits of the incoming bit stream in a parallel fashion. So a very popular circuit <clears throat> is a serial to parallel converter. Okay? And you can do that with a shift register. But you can also do the same type of architecture using registers. So let's look at an example of we have a shift register that actually brings in data eight bits at a time. And we'll see how simple it is to model something that's this large. Okay? Now we can do this using four different processes, or we can do it with one process and actually model all four of these at the same time. And this is where you start seeing laying down some serious circuitry with very small VHDL. Because when I have this register right here, that's 8D flip-flops. If I have four of them, that's 32D flip-flops, and I can do it with a very short process. So here's what I want to look at. I'm going to create an entity that has one piece of information coming in that's called DN, and it's 8 bits wide. I am going to, inside of that, put down four unique registers, and I am going to feed the output of one of them into the input of another and cascade them in a line. I will then actually grab the output of each register and observe them on four different ports so that I can watch the data flow through this. Okay? All right. So the entity definition is going to be, obviously I've got clock and reset. I'm going to have DN, and I'm going to have four output ports, which I'll call D out, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then they're all going to be 8 bits wide. Okay? So I've created a project for this, and I have a test bench. And you can see the same port definition right here for my system. Let me go look at what I'm going to do for the data coming in. The data is just going to be a series of data, just like we did when we tested the register. We're just going to pump in 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and let's just see how it propagates through these registers. Okay, so I need to start off and create, I need to add the project a new file, and I'm going to call this shift register. Okay, and I go say okay, and now what I want to do is I want to enter the VHDL. Well, first thing I need is a library. You know, I don't want to type that anymore. I'm just going to paste it. And now I need to do the port definition. Well, I created the test bench first, like I always do. So what I want to do is just copy that port definition so that I don't get anything wrong and it matches exactly what I have in the test bench. And now what I'll do is say entity, boom. And now I see my entire thing, my shift register. I've got my clock reset. DND out one two three four and now let's go end entity and now I do my architecture so architecture and I'm going to do shift register oh, arc of shift register is I come down I say begin oh begin I do end architecture there is no longer word than architecture to type. Does anybody else feel this way? Okay, I'm going to save this and I'm going to compile all. Let's get the compiler warmed up. Successful. <laughs> now I come to you and I say, let's do some modeling of our little shift register. Okay? What I'm going to need to do is, when I think about this, I'm going to need internal signals. Okay? Because I want to use these internal signals here, to I want to assign to them, and I want to use them as inputs into other registers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create internal signals, and I'll call them D0, D1, D2, and D3. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I have to have, you can't have ports on the right-hand side of a, of a signal assignment. So if I assign this right to D out in that process, I would then come over here and I would say, okay, the output port is going to be an input to this. And it would bomb out. So it would say, what are you doing? This is an output port D out. You can't have that as an input to a register. 
But we can absolutely create a wire in my signal, or a wire in my VHDL, that is of type signal. So the, that's the reason that you have to come in here, and we're going to make these four internal signals that are 8 bits wide, and we'll use that to wire up the shift register. Then when we're all done, we'll just connect those up to the output ports. So the first thing I want to do is create these create these signals. Okay? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do signal. Okay? And I'll call it D0, D1, D2, D3. And it's of type standard logic vector. And it's 7 down to 0. That's 8 bits wide. Now I'm going to create a process. <clears throat> And we'll call it, we want to give it a name, we'll call it shift. And we're going to call it process. What's in the sensitivity list? It's sequential logic. The answer is always clock and reset. Absolutely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this puppy up. And I'll say begin. And I'm going to handle my reset condition. It's always the same. That's kind of interesting. If reset is equal to 0, then... But we're going to do this in one process. I have to actually make the assignments to all of my internal signals in one shot. But it's not a big deal. All we do here is say, if reset 0, then D0 gets assigned hex 0, 0, which is 8 bits. Let's do it in a line so we can see it just a little bit easier. Okay? So we'll go boom, boom, boom. So I'm going to reset all these puppies. Okay, so I feel so good. And then I'm going to say, else if, what? Else if is where I look at my clock. Okay, so now I'm going to do, otherwise on the rising edge of clock, then, now think about this. Here's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, I'm going to start looking at this. And I am going to model this behavior. Okay? So, here I go. The first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to model what this guy is right here. I'm going to call this line right here D0. I'm going to call this D1. Call this D2. And I'm going to call this D3. So, when I get a rising edge of a clock, I want D0 to get Dn. So, I'm just going to simply do this. Check this out. I'm going to copy this. I put these in a column for a reason. Okay? I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go boom. What is D0 going to get? It's going to get Dn. What is D1 going to get? It's going to get D0. What is D2 going to get? It's going to get D1. And what is D3 going to get? It's going to get D2. All right. And then... I'm done. Otherwise, hold your last value. So the way that you model no assignment is with nothing. So you just say, and if, let's end the process. And process. OK, let's see if the compiler likes what we have to say. So I do compile selected. Success. <laughs> now I load up my simulation. I double click on the, the test bench. And I'm going to observe all of this data flow through. So I'm going to go add to wave signals in region. And I'm going to run this puppy. Oh, goodness. You immediately go, I thought you said at the end of your architecture you would have to assign these internal signals back to the ports. And I said I did. I was just getting the simulator ready. So what I need to do is at this moment, I need to actually say, I have the values held in an internal signal. And I had to do that so that I could use them on the right-hand side of a signal assignment. I'm going to now assign those directly to the output ports. Okay? So now what I can do is I can come in here and I can say D out 0 gets assigned D 0. So this assigns my internal signal to the actual output port. And it's copy-paste. I can get all four of them in here. So this is one, two, three. Come up here. Up, 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 up. One, two, three. And now I feel a lot better about the way this is working. So I'm going to say compile selected. Success. Now I'm going to look at my wave, restart it. It's all warmed up. So I'm going to go boom, boom, boom. Let's take a look at what's happening here. 
First of all, I got too much data in binary. I can't even read this stuff anymore. So I want to go in and I want to change D in and all my D outs to hex. So radix hex. And I want to look at what it's doing. Here comes D in. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6. Look at what happens on D0. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. It's just shifting it through. Look at what happens on D1. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. It's shifting it through. Same thing with D2 and D3, but they're all staggered by one clock cycle because it's a shift register. The data is shifting through as we go. If I said, why would I ever do this? I might be converting serial to parallel. The information's coming in on a quote unquote serial 8-bit bus, and every four clock cycles, look at what I have access to. So every four clock cycles, I have access to all of the data. So right here, I had 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, all at one time. Over here, I had access to 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, all at one time. So this is in effect like an 8-bit serial to parallel converter. But more importantly, look at this logic right here. It's a shift register. And look at how simple the VHDL was once we started modeling this with a single process. It's sequential logic, and I can model it with a process. And these signal assignments just trickle flow. They trickle through like that. And this is RTL modeling. So I model a very large circuit with a very minimal amount of VHDL.